Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Leadworks, where we are here for Pride Rewind as part of Pride in Plymouth this year. I hope you have an amazing day and day and enjoying that weather. Thank you so much to those of you who have come down to visit our exhibition today uh, and for all your engagements online, for all the thousand views that we've had and also your questions. So we are doing a Q&A later on. That's at five o'clock. Please get your questions into us. We'll be happy to answer all those when we do our interviews later on. Now, as part of our Pride, obviously, we have to it's all about our celebration, our own pride, but also we have to do have to cover some kind of deeper, more serious topics. And we're going to be looking now for this segment at kind of hate crimes and crime against the LGBT community. Now, obviously, you know, in the current times we live in, there's been a lot of progress for the LGBT community and in the UK, but unfortunately not so for throughout the world. Uh, for instance, currently in Beirut, the LGBT community with the explosion, um, and that's not necessarily a hate crime, of course not, but those those issues affect the community. Um, All Out did a post today about um, people, the LGBT community being seriously affected and turned away from emergency care during that disaster. You know, there's still a long way to go. So it is prevalent that we talk about these issues. Um, Thankfully, the, as part of Devon and Cornwall Police, they do have a diversity sector. And as part of that, we have Graham Little, and we're going to hand over. He did a pre-recorded video for us. He wanted to give us a message about the work that the Plymouth Police do. So we're going to hand over to Graham Little now. Hi, my name is Sergeant Graham Little of Devon and Cornwall Police, and I work as part of the Diverse Communities team based at Charles Cross Police Station. The role of my team is to work with and support uh, victims of hate crime in the city, but also to conduct community engagement with those communities and support events such as Pride. Uh, the Pride event I see is a key day in our diary every year, and it's an opportunity for us to celebrate change, uh, but also difference, and also celebrating uh, how things have progressed over the years, but also at the same time, not forgetting uh, how Pride all came about at the start in relation to Stonewall and the reasons why that all came to fruition. And we also need to remind ourselves that it's uh, an opportunity to ensure that we don't uh, accept intolerance, indifference, and discrimination or hate and that we stand together on a united front to support each other. And on that note, I'd like to just, as a reminder, encourage people to uh, acknowledge if they are being targeted or subjected to any sort of hate or discrimination and believe they're a victim of hate crime or hate incident, please report that to Devon and Cornwall Police uh, through the normal methods of phone, through email, through the Devon and Cornwall Police website. Please let us know because we do want to know. And if you aren't confident in coming straight to us, then please consider going to one of our third party reporting centres such as Pride in Plymouth, uh, where you can make a report to them that will come through to us and my team and it can come through completely anonymous, but lets us know what's happened and where it's happened and when it's happened. And we can still do work with that, but for the better. So uh, I'll finish up there. I'll just leave you with a, a quick thank you to Alan and his team doing a fantastic job regarding this event. And uh, I hope you all have a very great day and take care from the Diverse Communities team. Thank you. Well, thanks very much there, Graham. Um, Within what we obviously Graham mentioned there about Pride in Plymouth being a third party organisation for people to report um, LGBT uh, hate crimes, but it's not and normal hate crimes we find. So I've actually got a special guest here, one of the directors also. Um, we've got Mark Ayres and Mark joins me to have a little chat about the work Pride in Plymouth do in terms of the third party hate crime. So hi, thanks for joining me, Mark. So yeah, tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, um, well, Pride and Plymouth is a third party hate crime reporting centre. Um, as an organisation, that means you can come to us, uh, tell us what's happened, and we can then liaise between you and the police. So you don't actually have to go to the police station, they don't have to come knocking on your front door. Um, we, you can do it completely anonymously as well, whereas we don't have to give the police your name, but they can still investigate the crime. And again, that's it's just in that liaison. And for a lot of people, it's very uncomfortable going direct to the police for whatever reason. Or they may not want their name to get out in the public domain. Um, so the sort of things which, you know, an incident, hate incident is where if somebody calls you a name, for instance, that's not a crime. But if they've threatened you 
or assaulted you or, or committed criminal damage against your property and that was fueled by hatred, then that is a hate crime. So the, the third party reporting centre, you can uh, log your crime through us through any of our social media channels, email, telephone, or indeed pop, it, pop down here at Leadworks. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like a really crucial and important service for the community. I mean, you know, as you say, some people may experience a hate crime, not sure where to, you know, directly go to the police, they may not feel that. And it's brilliant that kind of Pride in Plymouth are bridging that gap and giving people somewhere to go. And I spoke to Alan Butler earlier and he said that it's not necessarily sometimes you've been to events, it's not necessarily LGBT hate crimes, it's general hate crimes as well that people feel that they need to report. So have you found there's quite a lot of instances of that too? We, we don't just deal with the LGBT, we've got the people with disabilities, um, which has experienced hate crime because of their disability. We've had people that's uh, experienced stuff because of their race, and of course that goes in with our asylum seekers. Um, We've had people of faith that's been abused. Right. So we, we have had other things, people discussing stuff with us. Um, sometimes, it, like I said, it's an incident. It still should be reported. Yeah, because if somebody's absolutely. calling you a name, then it can um, escalate. So it starts off with name calling. Before you know it, it's criminal damage. Then before you know it, it's assault. And then it could be even become murder, like we saw in Plymouth 25 years ago. So it is really important that we capture what's going on. Absolutely. And it, yeah, that, that's, uh, we've got some more information about that video later, actually, we're going to be posting. Um, but as you can see, this is a real important issue to cover and uh, it's very prevalent now. And if you have experienced a hate crime, please come down to the Leadworks and see the team at Pride in Plymouth. Um, it's a very open and engaging environment, a safe environment for all. And if you have experienced a hate crime, uh, please come and see the guys and they'll bridge that gap between the police. But also, as Graham Little mentioned, if you feel comfortable going directly to the police, then please do that too. It's really important that you do so. Well. Have you got anything else to say, Mark? Have you got no, I think that covers all of it. Brilliant. Well, right. thanks ever so much for joining us here today. Well, Obviously, it's quite a deep and feels sometimes quite a dark issue, but also it's really important to cover that and uh, cover LGBT hate crimes. I mean, they're happening still all over the world, in Europe, and there's still a long, long way to go. So I thank you very much for your time. Right. Thank um, you. Well, actually, um, we've actually got... an. As we heard from Graham Little prior, um, we've also got another video from the former diversity uh, member of the police. So it's Graham Kirkup, and he now actually works as a community engagement officer. So we're going to hear a short video that he was kind enough to send in to us. So we're going to hand over now to Graham Kirkup. Hi, everybody. Um, this is my video clip of what pride uh, means to me. Um, for those of you who, who do know me, know I've been connected in some way uh, through my work I've done uh, in the community as part of the uh, historical police and diversity team when I was based in there, and more recently with the um, Police and Crime Commissioner. I think the, the brightest thing uh, that we bring is clearly these T-shirts. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, the event to me is such a bright and literally a bright affair, which uh, has gradually worked its way from the grassroots, if you like, in Devonport Park up onto a spectacular uh, scene uh, up on Plymouth Hall. And long may that continue. Um, I think uh, it also uh, gives some reward to all of the people who have been through so much on their own journeys and collectively as a committee to bring uh, the event uh, to where it currently stands. Um, sadly, we've had um, gale force winds have, have stopped us. And of course, this year, um, the COVID virus uh, has done the same. So looking forward to the 7th of August in 2021. But again, to a bright, uh, hugely popular event growing every year where people can feel safe and enjoy so many activities and information sharing and coming together as a collective of people, no matter on uh, any of their backgrounds, um, because I've seen the work that has gone on there from Plymouth Pride includes everybody. Um, and that's what we should all be trying to achieve uh, is that we should include and accept all sorts of differences. So I wish you all well and uh, looking forward to next year when I shall bring this bright t-shirt back out from its uh, mothballs uh, so love to you all and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you in the future bye for now
Well, we've actually got a treat for you now because uh, during the exhibition, Graham has actually popped in today with us. So he's just popped into our little studio. But before that, can I just mention that this is uh, the police station in Plymouth. They're proudly flying the flag today, which is fantastic. So, well, welcome. Thanks, Graham. We had a little no, chat it's earlier. Nice. It's nice to be here. It's lovely, isn't it, this little studio? So it's great to see you. Just heard your video there. Would you like to expand on any of your points about your work as a, a community engagement worker now? Yeah, I, th I think um, my role sort of, um, in some ways, has carried on from leaving the police force, which I served for 30 years, and, and then... The engagement work, um, the, the role was created as part of the office of the Police and Crime Commissioner for Devon and Cornwall. Okay. And, and, you know, and it's a positive thing that um, the office identified that how were they going to, in a peninsula area so huge, get to so many different community events? So that role was created. So for me, it was like continuing on from being part of the police diversity team. Um, but in obviously in a slightly different way, but certainly engaging. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Is, um, so what kind of work have you been doing of recently? Have you got things coming up, obviously, with the pandemic? That's obviously had changes. But what have you got any kind of current events or, or things you're looking to engage with? In okay, so, so everybody um, is, is, is obviously had an, uh, or been affected by the, the COVID thing. And, and uh, our office, in the sense of the engagement work we do, has been hugely affected. Uh, our events that we would attend and support would start roughly at the end of March. Oh, right. one, of the, one of the big events we would attend uh, early in the, the sort of event calendar would be Exeter Pride. And, and, you know, and other similar events like Exmouth Pride, Torbay has a diversity festival in Plymouth. But, of course, none of those things have happened. Um, across the whole peninsula, there'd be lots of other things going on in agricultural type shows, and, and that's affected people. So, so we've kept in touch via um, sort of Zoom which I think most people will either love the fact they can work with Zoom or have probably got fed up with it by now. <laughs> uh, I'm still teetering on the edge of, I'm nearly fed up with it, but because I think the human contact for so many people is crucial. Yeah, important. Um, and if you're going to be in engagement work of any kind and work with communities, I don't think a computer screen is the best way to do any of that, really. But. It's good that you've been able to actually have that platform, though, to still communicate with people, which I, I guess is the key. And hopefully moving forward, as you know, Zoom's the way of the world, it seems at the moment. But um, hopefully they'll be bridging the gap. And as you get into Pride, I know you mentioned kind of next year, getting back into Pride and everything, all your kind of work on the ground, face to face with people will be able to kind of start up properly again. Hopefully that will be sometime soon. Yeah, and I think our role gives us that link with communities. And although it may only be um, seen as at events, I think when you build relationships, then it's not just those events because you will have contact from people throughout the year. I think the crucial thing for the police uh, in the way of their diverse communities team is they've got that availability open to the public in the sense of uh, various communities sort of throughout the entire year rather than just at, at big events. So, you know, you heard uh, Graham Little talking and, and I worked uh, with Graham and the, and the team in Plymouth and it's hugely important to maintain that. Um, and again, from our point of view, we're getting to hear things at events. I mean... Um, I think I described it as a, one of the biggest, if not the most colourful event. I think prides are being celebrated across the world. Yep. Uh, I was lucky enough to visit San Francisco and see probably the number one pride event <laughs> in the world um, and seeing the emergency services join in on a, on a massive scale. Um, certainly you've seen more involvement um, from our own uh, police force in, in that time of uh, Plymouth Pride moving from Devonport Park up to the hall. I think um, we could rival San Francisco in the sense of overlooking the bay, if you like, but um, we're not wow. talking about uh, a bay, we're talking about the sound in Plymouth, and, you know, it's now held an amazing place. I, I think the last three years, sadly, um, although three years ago we danced in the rain, I Why think not? everybody <laughs> did, and, and it was amazing, and the live performers... Uh, talk about trooping through the rain. They were amazing. And uh, sadly, last year, we realised with health and safety issues, which we've got to take into account, of course, uh, the wind uh, put paid to last year. Um, this would have been probably the best season for all events, never mind today. And what beautiful weather we've for, got today. For Plymouth Pride, been, but yep. of course, other things have taken over. And, and um, we just got to look forward. I think um, the planning and the hard work that so many people have put in 
hopefully they will get their reward again um, next year and we'll be able to have a, It'll be a big, big one next year. Yeah, yeah huge, hopefully, and, um, and we should enjoy it. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, we've got one of our crew members actually down at the hoe. We'll be having a little report from that later. But um, thanks very much for your time, Graham. It's uh, really great in the work you do. And actually, that really proves that there's a lot of engagement with all types of uh, community, especially our community, all communities within Plymouth. And actually, there's a lot of support. So I'll go back to what I said before. If you've experienced a hate crime, please come down and talk to Pride in Plymouth. Um, it's a very open, engaging, friendly environment for you to do that. Or contact the police directly. There are our channel's open for you um, and it's a really amazing thing that they're doing down here so thank you for your time um, this is our we've got lots more segments coming up please continue watching our videos like them share them get those questions in we've got our live Q&A at five o'clock and we'll be here at the lead works until then so thanks very much for joining us on this live I've been Andrew thanks to our little guests and uh, we'll be back very soon